Personally, for me, yeah, it was the one I... Well, again, I, as I said at the close of my remarks, I, I mean, there's a, very, there's a number of very important functions for government, uh, obviously, in, in health care and education and uh, helping those who, uh, who need a little bit of help. Um, but I, I, there are a few that stand out as, as more important than this, uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as work with a group that, uh, that are, are vulnerable uh, and uh, that deserve the opportunity to contribute, as uh, Mike's just alluded to. Uh, I just think that this, uh, it doesn't get more important than, than this kind of work for government, whatever its stripe. Um, obviously this is good news for the, the people that are going to be impacted by it, the, the 7,000 and the, the 3,000 who already were, but if this is your costliest um, announcement we can expect, obviously there's three more, four weeks to go, so mm -hmm. for everyone else, what are they going to be expecting? A lot of people might be hearing that news. Sure. Sure. Well, a couple things. One, we're going to have a health care announcement here shortly, and uh, we're not starting from scratch, Sarah. You know, as a government, we've worked hard on health care issues. We acknowledge there's more work to be done, but I can tell you people waiting uh, longer than 18 months for orthopedic surgery because of our wait times initiative is down 70%. People waiting longer than a year is down 50%. There are 200 more doctors practicing in the province today with admittedly more needed. There's 900 more nurses operating today, a promise exceeded from the last campaign. Long-term care beds are being built. So when we have our health care announcement, we'll, make, we'll announce some additional targeted investments. We need to deal with uh, rural health care issues. But it, 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 we're not starting from zero. We're starting from a point of, of um, some progress and a significant investment in over four years and a record. Moreover, I would say this, Sarah, I, I'm not sure the people of the province are all waiting for all the political party leaders in this campaign to dole out promises. I think they also want to make sure that the budget is balanced. I think they would like to know that there's a chance for us to continue to re reduce debt. I, like, I, I think they want to make sure that we have the fiscal responsibility in this pro province ongoing that underpins our economic strength. It's leading the nation right now. And our ability to afford $77 million for the 440 waitlist initiative, for example, as a, as a society, our ability to afford this announcement today and more work down the road that's needed, as I've acknowledged, is dependent on, on us being fiscally responsible. Uh, that's how we're going to keep things going in the long term. Well, that's a long answer, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, uh, I'm not sure everyone is waiting for a, a special little announcement. I think they want to they wanna know the government's got their priorities right. I, I would just say this. We know from today's announcements from, from our opponents who are making an announcement on post-secondary, a very important policy area, that they're now up over $2 billion in promises over the four years. According to the government's own own forecast. The Ministry of Finance has forecast that the cumulated surplus over the next four years is about $900 million. So if they're at $2 billion, there's a billion dollar plus deficit there already in their plans. That's without costing out a revenue sh a resource revenue sharing for First Nations. So I don't think the people are waiting for deficits. I think they're waiting for responsible government and a government that cares about, uh, about uh, things like uh, issues like we're talking about today.